Hello, welcome to the Roundhouse Podcast with Paul Solentrop of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. Thanks for listening. We appreciate your time. Today we're going to talk Shocker Baseball. We have Jaden Gustafson and Mauricio Milan. Jaden is a sophomore outfielder. He is from Mays High School. Mauricio is a senior. He is a catcher from El Paso. The Shockers are in the middle of fall practices. You can come and check them out on Saturday at 3 p.m. They will scrimmage against Cowley College. Shockers also will go on the road, play at Dallas Baptist on October 28th, and then the Fall World Series back at X Stadium, of course, starts on November 1st. Jaden, let's start with uh, some big picture baseball topics. Who are you rooting for in the baseball playoffs? Do you have a team? Um, I've I like watching the Astros. I think they have a the fun lineup to watch, and I've also grown to like watching the Braves, which um, they're top to bottom. Everyone in their lineup can just flat out hit. So. I like watching the Braves, too. Two good ones. Is there a player on in those lineups that you really, really like to watch? I like Ronald Acuna, and um, for the Astros, I probably would say Jordan Alvarez. So those are my probably my two top ones from those two teams right now. Two good ones. Mo, how about you? I'm, I'm probably rooting for the Rangers, just being a Texas boy. Um, the fact that they haven't made a run in a while. And I really enjoy watching Jonah Heim catch, um, just the way he, he goes about the game, and, and I just enjoy watching him play a lot. So are you really locked in on the catcher and, and what yeah. they're doing back there when you're watching? Really, yeah, that's my biggest thing. Anytime I watch a major league team uh, play or just even even just regular season, I just like to watch the catcher and just see how natural it comes to them um, and little things that they do is something that I enjoy about watching baseball a lot. So I, I really zone in on the, the catcher when it comes to major league baseball. Who else, what other catchers do you admire for their defensive skills? Um, this Yadier Molina was always my role model growing up um, now that he's retired um, Jonah Heim uh, JT Romuto um, those are two that I really like the way they catch um, but Yad- Yadi was always my guy growing up so but for now I've been watching those two those two and Clay Overcash the assistant coach yes. here has a connection with Romuto right yeah so he- we talk we talk attack angles and a bunch of the stuff he does which I think helps us catchers a lot as well um, so me and me and Cash will talk about it all the time um, anytime I I'm feeling a certain way. He's like, well, JT likes to do this, and who's not going to take some advice from JT Romuto? So. Yeah. Clay Overcash, that's just a great Western name. Do you think he was a cowboy <laughs> in a previous life? He should be on Yellow. I think that's a character on Yellowstone. Yellowstone maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a, what, a, what a good name. Jaden, uh, take us back to your young days. Describe the time when you fell in love with the sport of baseball. It's really as long as I can remember. My mom played in college um, at the University of at the University of Oregon, and um, she's been coaching softball at the JUCO level and Division two level ever since I can remember. So, I've always been around softball and baseball. So it goes back as far as I can remember. So you were you the little kid tagging along with mom to practice yeah, and shagging practice, balls, practice games on the bus, all that. Okay, Mo, how about you? When did you fall in love with baseball? I think. Just kind of like Jaden, since I can remember, I think uh, my two older brothers played a big role in that. Uh, my oldest brother played pro ball in Mexico for two years, um, and then my second oldest brother, he played baseball all the way up until high school, and then went on to play uh, Division One football at University of Texas at El Paso. But I think just growing up, going to their tournaments, playing catch with other kids my age there, um, I think it just kind of sparked that passion for me, and I think baseball was just kind of something... I was destined to play just just having two older brothers compete at a high level. Um, and then my younger brother followed in our footsteps as well. He's no longer playing, but he played baseball for a while. And I think just being around a family of athletes was, was a big, big deal, just, just playing sport. And I used to wrestle and play football, but baseball always had that kind of special place in my heart. And I always thought I was a little bit better at baseball than any of the other sports I played. So that's kind of how I fell in love with the game. Being a college athlete means road trips. You're going to spend long hours on a bus, maybe on a plane. Uh, Mo, what's your go-to accessory? You have a pillow, ear, <laughs> earbuds. How do you how do you pass the time on a on a road trip? So definitely, I I feel like I need some some headphones just whenever um, I need some alone time on the bus or on the plane. Um, just either watch Netflix, movies, whatever it may be. But I think when it comes to to bus bus drives, we we play a lot of mafia. <laughs> It's uh, it's kind of like a bus game that we'll play, um, and it just makes makes the time pass. And we get really into it. It gets pretty heated in the back of the bus. It's usually it'll usually split up, like the back of the bus is playing. It's either Godfather or Mafia. It's a similar game, and um, 
Yeah, it's a game that gets pretty pretty intense, and, and the whole back of the bus is kind of yelling at, at each other. But I think it's great for team chemistry and, and just kind of messing around with the guys. Jaden's played a couple of rounds of it too, but he's he's not very good. <laughs> We're gonna need a description of this of these games. What's Mafia or Godfather? So, what's the description? Mafia. The best way to to describe it is you you have a narrator, and then there's a mafia, and then there's townspeople. So the narrator usually will pick one Godfather. And the Godfather can recruit two people. Um, and then nobody else knows who the, who's in the mafia except for those three people that are in the mafia. And they're, they're, the whole objective or the whole goal for them is to convince the town people that they're clean. But the town's people's goal is to find out who the mafia members are. And after every round, someone gets eliminated. And the, basically the way you win is if there's more mafia members than town's people at the end, mafia wins. If, there's, if the town's people vote out the mafia members, town people win. And so are you asking questions then, I guess? Yeah, so, yeah, and it's it's really a game of manipulation. So you, if you're in the mafia, you kind of have to lie your way out of it and, and say, well, I, I'm not in the mafia because of this. And then if someone else knows or has a feeling you're in the mafia, you're like, no, you're in the mafia because of this. So it's just a lot of bickering back and forth and gets really competitive, so you know how that goes being college athletes. I won't ask who the best liar is on the team, so I'll ask who's the best <laughs> mafia player on the team. Um. I, I like to say I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty high up there. Last year, I always knew it was him. Last year, <laughs> last year Brock was pretty good. He just kind of had a really good poker face, so it was kind of hard to tell. Um, Garrett Pennington was pretty good at the game. Um, Seth Stroh can can have some good rounds as well. But there's people like Jaden was terrible at the game. Jace Minor was terrible at the game. Um, Kite McDonald was was awful at the game. He just <laughs> just people that that just don't have that poker face. So if you sure. call them out, they kind of turn red and and kind of sell themselves out so okay interesting i've never heard of that game uh go to tv show podcast what do you watch when you're when you're on a on a long road trip Jane, you go all right um i like i i like all sorts of stuff um like i've been watching quarterback on netflix um the one with kirk cousins patrick mahomes um and marcus Mariota. but i like a lot of sport related stuff um just to i just like to see how people at that level kind of think the way they go about their their everyday um business like last chance you i love series like that just anything that has to do with sports i'm, I'm a really big sports guy so that's kind of what where i where i stay and then if if i like a movie on netflix that seems interesting i'll i'll watch that as well but for the most part it's usually sport sport related stuff Jaden, how about you? How are you passing the time? I usually keep it pretty sports related too when I'm watching any t- uh, movies. It's mostly movies or documentaries. Um, I also like watching Last Chance U. My favorite seasons were obviously probably the ones where they were doing it in, over at Independence Community College, just because um, I actually lived in Garden City my freshman year of high school, and so there was a there was a few episodes involving Garden City which I thought were interesting, just because I watched that team. Um, every Saturday and I would see them all the time to being at the junior college all the time. So, um, I usually like to keep it pretty sports related too. Okay. New coaching staff at, at Wichita state, obviously coach Brian green, uh, give the people a description of what's been the mood. How are things kind of flowing in, in fall practices? Jaden, I'll let you go first. He's a really energetic guy. And I think that we've all found out pretty quick that he is, um, a really good players coach. Um, he's going to fight for his players and, He's going he's gonna to let us know when we're doing well, and he's going to let us know when we're not doing so well. And that's something that I like in a coach. When I'm not doing well, I want to be told so I can fix it as soon as I can. So, um, But I would say his energy is probably the biggest thing that stands out to me so far. Mo, what's your, been your impressions? Kind of adding on to that, he is a really energetic guy, which I enjoy a lot. Um, but I think what I enjoy a lot from Coach Green and this coaching staff is the expectation to win. Um, we... We kind of gathered together um, at the beginning of, of the fall, and we had like a team meeting, and he made it clear that this is not a, a building year by any means. This is, this is we have an expectation to win this year, and we have the guys to do it. We're a really talented group, um, and I think they, they know a lot about baseball, and they're really big on getting an edge on, on any team we, we can. Um, so I'm really excited, and, and I think the, the group of guys that we have is really bought in. I think everyone um, wants to win, and everyone is kind of doing anything in their power to win. So I think um, as soon as the puzzles start kind of clicking together, I think it'll be a really fun team to watch, a really energetic team. Um, one thing I really enjoy a lot 
is um, our dugout presence. That's something that's really big and stands out to me is winning games in the dugout, which means um, kind of just expanding on that is if you're not playing that day, there's certain things you can do in the dugout to help the team win. Um, and he's he's really big. Coach Green's really big on that. So it's Coach Overcash just picking up little tendencies the pitchers may have, tendencies the catchers may have, um, tendencies on a swing, little things like that that I think give you an edge um, when it when it when it's all said and done. And I mean, baseball is a game of inches. Baseball is a game of one play, one pitch. So we always need that that um, extra edge. Okay, so I had to, I had picked up on that. The dugout behavior was an important thing to this coaching staff. I thought it was an enthusiasm thing, a, a focus thing. There's also a strategic component then too that they're big on. Yes, definitely. Um, our our team likes to refer to it as a championship dugout, um, and just just getting an edge on the team in any way possible. And I feel like us as athletes, we work so hard for the game. Everything we do is to kind of show out in the game. So. He's really big on like, all right, once the game starts, it's like, all right, it's time to lock in. It's time to do anything in, in your power to, to make sure our team wins. Um, so I think that's that's a really big jump, and it's helping a lot of, especially the younger guys uh, on the mental side of the game and really lock in and not just being a player but also being a student of the game, um, which I think is going to help the younger guys a lot. I think that's something that I kind of have learned as being a catcher, but I wish I would have known when I was 18, 19 year, years old, like some of the some of the freshmen, sophomores coming in. Um, so I think it'll definitely help help the program in the long run and help the individual players as well. So if someone picks up on a pitcher's tendency, they're yes. encouraged to to bring that up. Yes. Let's see what let's see what we can do with this. Definitely. Okay. So Mo, you're in an interesting situation. If I'm counting correctly, this will be your third head yes. coach in three years. Yes. <laughs> What's that done as far as teaching you about being, I guess, adjustable, flexible? can't be always comfortable for yeah. you. How is this, how, you know, how are you dealing with this kind of change? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've had three coaches in the last, three different coaches in the last three years, which has not been easy by any means, just because it's 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 tough to get comfortable when, when you're changing from coach every year. So in junior college, I had a, a really young coach whose coaching style was a lot different than Coach uh, Hibbs last year. And then this year, we have Coach Green, whose coaching style is different from Coach Hibbs. But I think it's helped me a lot um, just kind of expand my, I guess, my portfolio and the type of player that I've become. Um, Not just being one certain player that was coached one certain way and only knows how to play the game that certain way. I think it's taught me different aspects of the game. Um, And I, I mean... It's it's been it's been tough. It's been really tough just because some coaches believe in different values and different um, just different things and different ways to play the game. But I think it'll it'll definitely help me in the long run, especially um, if I if I decide to to pursue a career with baseball, whether it be playing, coaching, scouting, whatever it may be. I think this having three different coaches and three different uh, minds to the baseball game will, will definitely help me in the long run. So I don't mind it at all. At all, it may be uncomfortable at times. Um, but I mean, I'm I'm really big on um, discomfort. Uh, helps a person grow and helps a person just just become become more knowledgeable. Um, so I I don't mind it at all. Definitely would get a lot of different viewpoints going yes. through this over the last three years. So Jaden, uh, you played for the Hutchinson Monarchs over the summer, won the NBC World Series. Tell us a little bit about that experience with the Monarchs and how that helped prepare you for for the fall and and getting back to college baseball. Yeah, you know, so um, going into the summer, I didn't really know how much I was going to be playing every week. I didn't know how many outfielders or how many players we were going to have on the team, but um, I found out pretty quick that I was going to be playing every day or if I wasn't playing out in the field, I was going to still be DHing. And so um, just that playing every day thing, it's kind of gotten me ready for the fall, just playing every day, not really wearing out too much as much as I was last fall last fall I felt like I got worn out pretty quick and um this fall feels a lot different that summer prepared me just playing every day um competing seeing pitching every day and so as far as the team went for the Monarchs um it felt like most of the summer we were kind of sluggish like we had a really talented team but um no one really knew like what goal we were going for and once we got to the NBC tournament it was like it's like, all right, we can win this. We saw the other teams playing. We can win this. And um, the championship game we played against a really good Santa Barbara team who is obviously really popular in the NBC baseball um, population. So when we got there, we knew we could win. Um, 
and it was a really cool experience and a really cool last experience to go into the fall. Tell us about the adjustment from high school to college baseball. What were, what were the biggest challenges you faced? The quickness of the game, obviously being in Kansas, um, there's not maybe the competition that Texas or California or other high schools have. So just facing that higher level competition every day instead of maybe once every few months. So i say that was probably the biggest difference, being around players that are better than me. Um, it's something I had to adjust to and something I had to realize that I had to learn from my other teammates instead of just learning off the internet or coaches or something. And I, last year I was able to learn from a lot of players on our team, and it's helped me a lot this year, I think. That's an interesting topic, and you two would be good to ask because if you've talked to especially softball and baseball coaches at, at Wichita State, they might tell you that a player from Texas or California might be more polished. They might come in more ready, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe. But then a lot of times they will find a, a, a an athlete from Kansas or Nebraska has a higher ceiling, can really grow more quickly. Would you agree, disagree, Mo? What, what would your thoughts be on something like that? Yeah, definitely. I think obviously playing in Texas in high school, the competition was really good. Um, but I think that is true. I think a lot of players in Texas may kind of plateau in high school. Um, and just kind of not reach their full potential, but are, are pretty close. And then once they get to the Division One, Division Two, whatever whatever level they continue to play at, um, there's certain things they can improve on. But they've kind of reached a higher potential than people per se in Kansas or Wisconsin, Nebraska. Like Nate Sneed's a perfect example of that. Um, but I just think growing up in in a big in a big uh, state like Texas, um, the competition is really good. You're you're seeing. Uh, mid to upper eights, usually lower nines in high school, which is it, it's pretty good, pretty good velocity um, when it comes to to high school baseball. And there's there's a handful of players that you're playing with in high school that are are also going to play at college, or you're playing against people that are also Division One commits. So I think the level is a lot a lot more even. Um, but like you said, I think um, the ceiling may be a little bit higher for certain players. In, in smaller states, um, that may not always be the case, but a lot of the a lot of the times that that is definitely the case. So yeah, Jaden, do you feel like once you start catching up as far as playing time over the summer, playing a lot in the fall, good competition, do you feel like then you can kind of catch up on an experience level, and then you've got room to really a lot of room to improve? Yeah, de I definitely still think I have a lot of room to improve, um, but I do feel like. Um, my experience already from last year being put in some of the situations I was put in in games has helped me a lot um, with adversity and just nerves in certain situations. And, um, you know, fuck, I already forgot what the way. Yeah, <laughs> oh, just, I, I just, every I just, inning has got to be a learning experience yeah, for you. No, the more it definitely that you is. Get. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Um, being in high school a lot, it was just kind of, I was relying more on skill over others, and now I have to rely on my mind a little more but not overthinking too much and the la last year helped me a lot with it definitely so you two are two of the I believe 10 returners from last year's team so take me back to August uh, new guys are coming in there's going to be a lot of new faces what was your role how were you trying to you know get things started on the right note and, and build some chemistry on this team Jaden what were your what was your plan back then um, I'm a person that it, it, it takes a while for me to warm up to a big group of people, especially 30-something new players that we had. But um, I tried making everyone feel as welcome as possible. Um, Mo and Seth and Jordan stepped into more of the leadership role. And um, I was more playing it like uh, just trying to make everyone feel welcome and not like it was too serious. And um, that's just kind of how I went about it, and it's worked out pretty well for me so far. Mo, you probably have an added challenge because you got to get that pitching staff yeah. together, and I know you like to, you know, to dive in with those guys and and get to know them. How did you approach, you know, dealing with so many new pitchers? It was just getting to know them off the field. Um, it's kind of any time you you link up with a whole new pitching staff, a whole new pitching coach, um, whole new coaching staff as well, but more so the pitchers. You just got to get to know who who they are off the field, so you know how to approach certain situations on the field. Um, I feel like we talked about this a, a good amount last year and just knowing the personalities of the pitchers. So I think that's that's the biggest important or the most important thing when it comes to pitcher and catcher relationship is just getting to know the guys not only on the field but off the field. 
Um, and I, I talked to Cass. That was one of the first conversations we had when once I met him was knowing knowing um, what type of pitchers we're going to be working with and how we can approach them. There's probably four or five pitchers that I knew that were coming back, which was Mike Mahollin. Um, it was Nate Adler, Caden Favors, and Matt Wilkinson. Um, I, I'm not sure if I'm missing one or two there, but Virgo. and Verco. Um, but as far as the rest of the pitching staff, they were all new guys. Um, and I think this fall, we've kind of we're kind of getting to know them a lot better. I'm a lot more comfortable with the pitchers now, um, and then kind of moving away from the relationship, also getting to know what type of pitches they have, their certain movements, and I think just catching them over over the fall helps a lot. So us catchers are definitely a lot more comfortable now um, as we're getting deeper into the fall. Caden Favors came back, and he's the guy who's had some good some good innings, some good games here at Wichita State. He would seem to be – there's some opportunity for him because definitely. of his experience and because of his talent. Tell us a little bit about his fall and how that's going. He's good. He's, he's definitely – going to have a really big role on our pitching staff this year um, we're looking for him to definitely eat up a lot of innings and he's just he's just if if he goes out and, and plays with the confidence and, and mentality that that we all know he's capable of he'll be he'll be dominant um, just kind of like last year he was he had a really good first half struggled a little bit towards the end but Caden Favors is a guy that's just going to go out on the mound and compete um, you'll never know if he's having a bad outing or, or a good outing um, he's just going to kind of go up there and go about his business and, and compete. So I think he'll be a really big big uh, piece for us this year, as, as, as well as, as some of the other returners. I think Wilkinson, Wilkie will have a, a big role as well. I think Nate Adler will have a big role, Mike Mahollin. So um, those are guys that are definitely going to have to step up a little bit this year, um, just being some of the, the few returners, only returners from last year on the pitching staff. So I think they'll have their, their, plate, their plate pretty full, but I think – all of them are, are more than capable of, of stepping up and helping us win some, some games in the spring. So, Jaden, uh, for people who may be coming out Saturday to watch the scrimmage with Callie, hit them with a newcomer or two that they should keep an eye on. Um, the first two that come to my mind are Ryan Callahan from Johnson County and Josh Livingston from Crowder College. Um, they're two left-handed hitters that can, that can really swing it, and um, they're good defensively too. But those are just the first two that come to my mind when I'm talking about hitters that can just flat out hit and have good at bats and don't don't chase. Um, they're really patient up there, and those are the first two that come to my mind when I'm thinking about hitters. It seems like Ryan Callahan has played a lot of first when I'm out here. Mm -hmm. Josh has played maybe some third and first. Yeah. Okay, so two names, both of them transfers, so two names to keep an eye on. Mo, how about you? Who would you tell a fan to, to keep an eye on? I'll, I'll lean a little bit towards uh, the pitching staff since Jaden named a couple of uh, hitters. I would say Daniel Zhang. He's definitely had a really good, really good fall. Um, he's turned a lot of heads. He's he's a guy that has really good command of his fastball, has really good pitches. And then Gavin Oswald as well, big lefty. Um, they're both junior college guys that I think will will play some some big roles on our team this year. They've been they've been really fun to catch, not so fun to hit against. So. <laughs> That's those are those are two guys that kind of call my attention this fall. So, and I just learned uh, Gavin Oswald played for the Savannah Bananas. <laughs> yes, he a did. couple years ago. Does he ever get you guys <laughs> dancing or show you a skit from the Bananas? No, he's actually, believe it or not, he's he's a really chill, down to earth guy. Just kind of goes about his business. Um, really, really level guy. So. Not, not maybe he may have to show us a couple moves for the spring, but yeah. <laughs> as of as of right now, no, he hasn't. Okay, it's kind of an interesting interesting thing. Uh, Jaden, let's say Mays High School invites you back to talk to some of their kids who are maybe want to go on and play college athletics. What's your advice? How do they handle the recruiting process? What should they be looking for in a in a school? Um, I was never a big fan of the. Division one or bust mentality. So I would just tell them that um, go somewhere where you feel like you can play, and it doesn't always have to be necessarily the bigger schools. And to listen to our head coach Rocky Helm over there because um, he obviously knows what he's talking about. Um, I think he's one of the best coaches in the country as far as high school coaches go. And um, I w I would just tell them that it takes a lot of hard work, and especially being from Kansas, you have to. You have to show up more when you're going to the bigger tournaments. You have to show that you can compete against those players and not just people from here. So 
you just have to keep working and have a chip on your shoulder knowing that you'll always kind of have to outperform the others to get looked at. Mo, how about you? What would your advice be to a high school student? My biggest advice would probably be to work to focus really on the development side of, of baseball. Um, I think a lot of players, especially high school players, get caught up in, I need to go to this showcase, I need to go to this perfect game tournament, I need to do this, I need to do that. But they're not, they're not physically or mentally prepared to go to those showcases. So when they go, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a waste of money, but you don't get, you don't get the most of the experience, the most of, of the tournament or showcase just because you don't have as much to showcase. So I think the, the biggest advice I would give to them is development. And I think going back to me and going to the junior college route was probably the best decision of my life up until this point. Um, just because it, it gave me an opportunity to, to play every day go to a place where I was wanted, I was going to be a guy at that place and just get a lot of experience under my belt. Whereas if I would have gone to a bigger squad, a high school, um, I don't think I would have been physically or mentally prepared to, to make an immediate impact. And I probably would have gotten redshirted and, and maybe lost a little bit of the love for the game. So I think definitely going back to what Jaden said as well is go somewhere where you're wanted, go somewhere where you're going to play and you'll be an immediate impact and go somewhere where you'll get innings and, and just become a better baseball player. Got a lot of uniform combinations at Wichita State. Black, gray, yellow, pinstripe. <laughs> Jaden, what's your favorite? I'd have to say mine's the all grays on the road. I think it's um I think they're they're pretty they're pretty sweet. So those are probably my favorite ones. Mo? Mine was the Tolly the Tolly combo last year, which was the yellow top, the yellow V neck shocker top, the black pants, and the throwback stirrups, the black stirrups with the yellow stripes. I always loved that combo. I just thought it was different and kind of wacky, but I enjoyed it, and I, I, I usually always played well in them, so it may be a superstition <laughs> thing as well. Okay. Mo, uh, walk-up song for this season and, and why? Uh, mine's mine's going to be, it's a little remix of Pepas and Danza Culudo. It's the same one as last year, but I've kind of always done a Spanish song or a, a Latin song um, every single year since I can remember, since I think I freshman year of high school when we were allowed to have walk-ups it's always been a spanish song just because um i take a lot of pride in my culture um my my dad and my mom and my grandparents all hispanic um so i think especially being in kansas i think it's pretty cool to have a different walk-up song something that kind of pops and stands out um and i like to let the people know that i i come from a hispanic uh background so that's always kind of been my thing Jaden, how about you so my my walk-up song Probably the last four years of my life have been California Love by Tupac, and I <laughs> decided to switch that up this year. And uh, for the fall, at first, I, ma I made it a Travis Scott song, and then Drake dropped a new album a few days ago. And so as soon as I heard this one song, it's called Gently, and it's Drake and Bad Bunny on the song, uh, I texted Denning, and I told him I wanted to change it to that. And it's kind of... I <laughs> Drake's rapping in Spanish at the beginning, but I, I didn't choose that part because he wasn't sounding too hot with that. <laughs> but um, I, chose the, I chose a song called Gently by Drake and Bad Bunny. That's mine this year. Okay, walk-up songs. Always, a, <laughs> always an interesting part of a baseball player's life. All right, the Shockers, they are in fall practices. You can come out and check them out at X Stadium, 3 p.m. Saturday against Cowley College. Uh, they'll be on the road to play Dallas Baptist on October 28th, and then you can come back out for the Fall World Series on November 1st. Jaden Gustafson and Mauricio Milan, thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Great insight as always. Thanks for listening to the Roundhouse Podcast, courtesy of Wichita State University Strategic Communications. We encourage you to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can always find more Roundhouse content at GoShockers.com. Down to a 3-2 pitch with two men on, two outs in the ninth. The stretch by Tyler Green. Here it comes. Suck him out! A no-hitter for Tyler Green! A strike three call on the outside corner, and Tyler Green has pitched the fourth no-hitter in Wichita State history, the second in as many years as he joins fellow classmate Charlie Gindrome as the author of a Wichita State no-hitter, and in the process struck out a career-high 13, including all three outs in the ninth inning.
Tyler Green completes a no-hitter, and Wichita State defeats New Mexico 12 to nothing.